going to get mad at someone that you, you owe money to. How you going to get mad that you owe that person money? divas what's up divas what's up divas your girl is back y'all what's up y'all what's up what's up what's up okay so y'all already know what time it is it's real talk okay real talk time so i did say i was gonna start real talk back up in february the end of february though it's probably a little bit early i just figured you know what i got these emails let's just kick them out let's just do this i ain't got shit else to do okay anyway so i hope y'all are having like a really great day let me just say this to y'all guard your stuff okay i'ma just just say that guard your stuff. After reading this email, I realized like a lot of us as people, we really need to guard our stuff. It could be anything from your heart, your finances, your emotions, your friendships. It it just personal information. It's just a lot out here. And there's a lot of evil and wicked people in this country, this world. So just guard your stuff. And I say that because for one, after reading this email, I just realized like, you know something? Life is really short. And I say this a lot because it matters a lot. Life is really short. And we all try to gain knowledge. We all try to gain wealth. We try to gain a lot of things in the short term of what we call a life. And though it is short, it is long lived for a lot of us, some of us, unfortunately, not enough of us. And though it is long lived and it may not seem short to you guys, it is. And you have to enjoy your surroundings. You have to enjoy your own self. You have to enjoy family and friends. And th- with that being said, I just feel like there's a lot of wicked and evil, evilness going on in this world. And it's unfortunate that our own people can do this to one another. It could be, when I say our own people, I'm not necessarily meaning as in color. I'm meaning as in a person, as in a human being. Because at the end of the day, we all bleed the same. At least I know we do. We all have a lot of the same things. Might not all be skin color, ethnic backgrounds, but we all do have the same type of blood. We all bleed the same. We all bleed. We all got bones holding us up. So we all are human beings. And when I say our people, I mean all of us as human beings. And it's just sad and it's just pathetic that there are so many evil and nasty people in this this world, this community, this this life, okay? So guard guard your feelings, guard your stuff, guard yourself, okay? Sometimes you got to put up that wall because it's like the only protection that you may have. And when you let it down, girl, it's no telling what's going to happen. And also just just guard your finances. That's number one to me, okay? Um, I have guarded a lot of my life, okay? And that's okay because I'm a human being. And I noticed like a lot of different things in my life that has changed and has just become better. And one thing that I will say, like I said, you got to guard yourself. You got to guard yourself because that also alleviates a lot of negativity. You know, sometimes you just got to surround yourself with not too many people. Sometimes you got to surround yourself with just yourself, okay? Y'all know I am a very introverted person. So I don't really socialize with a lot of people. I don't hang out with a lot of people. I don't go out a lot like that just because that's just me. I'm an introvert. I'm a very introverted person. And I will say I'm very proud of myself for stepping outside of my shell and venturing out a lot. Like, you know, this past summer has been like a really great summer for me. I have met amazing friends. I, I'm very proud of myself for getting out and being able to conquer certain things that made me a little bit nervous, you know, because on video, I can seem like a very outgoing person which I am. I'm a very friendly person. If you ever meet me in person, I'm very friendly. I go wherever I go, any establishment I go into, I'm always, you know, very outspoken, not as in a bad way, but like when I walk in, good morning, good afternoon. How's it going? How are you guys? I just feel like that's very necessary for me to do because I would want someone to treat me as in the same. 
So being an introverted person, like I said, I'm already guarded. I'm already like secluding myself. But sometimes when you let yourself go, just so loosey goosey, you don't know what's going to happen. So you really need to guard your life, period. Let me just go and leave it at that. And with that being said, we're going to get into this real talk. But let me tell y'all, I found some eyelashes, okay? Now, mind you, I don't need no more damn eyelashes. When I say I don't need no more damn eyelashes, meaning a girl do not need no more eyelashes in her collection. There was a time when I had decided I was going to sell eyelashes on my website and I bought loads and loads of lashes. Never got around to posting them. The pictures were great, but not that great. Bought packaging for them and everything and just never posted them. Never got the site going. But I did get the site going with my bracelets, okay? So maybe I should put these lashes on there, but it's not really that important to me. And besides, my daughters have been going through them, taking what they want. That was my store website lashes. Now, I do have my own huge collection of brand new, huge collection of lashes that I don't even wear because I'm so particular of certain lashes. I don't know. I just don't want them to be looking like caterpillars on my lids. I don't want them to be too big. I have gone outside plenty of times with some oversized caterpillars, okay? You know, you go through a phase in life, and then when you look back at it, it's like, girl, why would you even wear one of those? Why did you have on lashes that reach your eyebrows? Girl, what is wrong with you? So I'm very particular with lashes that I put on now. You know, at the age of my age, 49, girl, listen, I don't want no oversized, dramatic drag queen lashes on. Now, to each his own, you can wear whatever you want to wear. That's your business. But for me, it's a no. So anyway, I was at the 99 cents only store. Y'all know the 99 cents only store is not 99 cents only. They be lying. So when I was in there a few weeks ago, like a couple of weeks ago, like last week or whatever, they had this huge array of freaking Ardell lashes. Okay. They had like, I think there was probably like three or four different pairs, different, you know, different types of pairs. So lash contour comes with two lashes, okay? And it also comes with this duo eyeliner glue. You put the eyeliner on it, you just put it on there. So I'm like, oh, you get two of these for $1.29. It doesn't have a price label on it or it doesn't stay on the shell or the peg, then it's $1.29. But these things ran up for $2.99. But anyway, 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 they had loads of them, loads. And I'm not really sure how much these things cost in the actual store store where they were sold at, like Sally's Beauty. I'm pretty sure they were more than $2.99. But I thought these were really nice. So if you live anywhere in Arizona and you like lashes, go to the 99 cent store on Van Buren, girl. They got loads of these. Plus they also have this other brand called Tony that is also sold at the Dollar Tree. I'm not really a huge fan of those because the band is super thick, but on these they're clear bands. And that's what I like, clear bands, so that way I don't have to use any eyeliner. So let's get into this Real Talk video. I'm trying to figure out a way to um, put the actual email that I received on the screen so that way you guys can read along with me in case you can't understand me. When I say this is long, this is long. Also, I will put all my email addresses down below of where you can send your own Real Talk to. If you have a Real Talk that you would like me to discuss in our Real Talk videos, please send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com or you can send it to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line for either or email Real Talk so that I know it is a Real Talk. If you want to change the name of your actual self in this email, please go ahead and do so. Let me know that you've changed your names. If you don't, I may make one for you or I may use your real name. I'm not really sure. Hey, Miss April, divas and devos. First, let me start off by saying thank you so much for bringing back Real Talk. You can call me Shanice. I'm 35 years old and I have two children and a husband. This story is not about me, but about a close friend who really needs to be clocked. And I'm not sure how to go about clocking her, except for clocking her upside her head. Okay. Um, we have been friends for about 10 years now, and she was really my homegirl at a time. But seriously, right about now, these days, I am not really sure if she and I can stay being friends. For this story, you can call my homegirl, Leslie. And I think that's how you say it. L-E-S-I. Leslie? Leslie? Uh, We're going to call her Leslie, okay? Leslie and me have been super cool for over 10 years. However, I have noticed a change in her. She's five years older than me, which makes her 40. And for a woman of that age, you would think she would carry herself more like a lady. Leslie has one child whom I would say is grown because she is 20 years old. Recently, Leslie, myself, and another homegirl went on a girl's trip cruise, which was for seven days. It started off great, or at least I thought it did. The other homegirl, you can call her Marley. And we've been knowing Marley for some time as well. We all get our funds together for this cruise. I was the one who did the booking for all of us. Now, mind you, I did say Leslie has a 20-year-old daughter, whom I would say is grown, and she did not come on the cruise trip with us. She stayed behind, as she should have. 
However, her and her mother do hang out a lot together. So I did the booking for all of us, and Leslie did not have all her money up front to pay me for the booking. But she said she would give it back to me either before the trip took off or on the date of the trip. Either way, she was going to make sure she gave me my money back, which was a total of $1,500. And I forgot to mention, Marley was a friend of Leslie's way before she was mine. So we go on this trip. And mind you, I still did not get the money of $1,500 back from Leslie. And I was hoping on the day we took off on that cruise, I was hoping she would have the money in hand to give me back. We on the cruise on like day two, and you know all things are included in the cruise trip. But you know souvenirs and whatever you buy outside of the cruise, when you dock, is on you. You have to pay for it. That's on your pockets. So on day two, we dock. We go and we explore the country, which was our first spot. And remember, I said Leslie did not give me my money back. So Shanice never got her money back from Leslie as of yet. They on day two on this trip, okay? And Leslie and give Shanice her money back. On day two, we docked and we go explore the country, which was our first spot. And remember, I said Leslie did not give me my money back. So I thought she really didn't have it like that. We out here exploring and Leslie is spending and buying stuff like it's going out of style. Never once did she say anything about money given, being given back to me. Her and Marley are out here spending money on things like it's going out of style, as well as I am too. However, I don't owe anyone any money. So day two, we exploring, having a great time, and we get back to the cruise ship. It's now dinner time, and we decided to eat at the buffet on the ship. We sit there, we drink in. Marley and Leslie are lit April, like they are drinking up like a storm. But that is not my business. Well, apparently it is. There are a bunch of people in the buffet eating and enjoying themselves as well. Leslie bets Marley some money to twerk on the table. She bets her $300 to do it. And of course, Marley accepts the bet and does the twerking. How embarrassing. April, I was so embarrassed. Some people were applauding her. Some were looking like, what the F is going on? Some were looking disgusted. I get up and pretend like I need to use the bathroom as I really don't like the attention of people watching us. Like about 30 minutes later, we go, we get back to our room. We all share one big room, which is really nice. We, be, we get back to the room and Leslie and Marley are looking at me kind of weird, but giving each other these side eye weird looks. So I ask, what's up? What's good? Why y'all talking amongst each other and looking at me weird? Marley starts in saying how I'm a loser, a Debbie Downer, a hater, etc. And Leslie is actually agreeing with her, like egging her on. Now, Marley is 30 years old, so I figured she would be more mature. Let me just tell you, they both coming at me for not going along with the twerking bet and being so stiff acting. I was going back and forth with the both of them and finally said to Leslie, how you making bets and giving money out and spending money but not paying your debt to me for this fucking trip, which you owe me $1,500? Marley is telling Leslie, tell that bitch she ain't getting none of her money back. Tell that bitch... Black, you told me, tell that bitch she not getting any of her money back, just like you told me. I'm like, oh, really, Leslie? You not paying me back? You not paying me back? We going back and forth, back and forth. It got so loud in our room that I guess either another guest alerted a staff or the staff heard us. Either way, the cruise ship staff came and knocked on our door, removed me from the situation, and allowed me to stay in the spare room for the night so that we would be able to cool down. Well, next afternoon, we end up seeing each other on deck by one of the pools. They are already there sitting, and I walk up to them, ask if we can discuss what happened the night prior. Marley gets in my face, saying all kinds of things that is not really needed, just being disrespectful. Then Leslie joins in with Marley, and these two grown women are making a scene on deck, and now we all yelling and going back and forth and getting in each other's faces. April, we end up fighting, I mean physically fighting, or rather I got jumped by the two of them. Once again, staff had to pull us apart. I decided at that point it was best for me to leave from the next place our ship docks at and fly back home, which I did. Two weeks after the trip was over, I don't hear from either one of them, but end up seeing them in public while out running errands. I'm with my husband and two kids, and Marley and Leslie are out with themselves, and Leslie's daughter who I said was 20 years old, was also with them. April, we in the parking lot of a small mall and run into each other. Leslie's daughter walked up to me, got in my face. My husband told her to back off, stand back. Leslie is not telling her little mini me to get out of my face. She's being all disrespectful to me and my family. And Leslie is behind her daughter yelling once again. She said, bitch, you ain't getting no money back from me. The only way you get any back is in blood, bitch, take me to court. 
Because of that, we ended up fighting physically. My husband had to escort the kids back to our car and pull us apart along with some strangers walking through the parking lot. I am not sure what to do in this situation, but I am going to need my money back. This was my friend. These were my friends, or at least I thought they were, but found out they were talking about me behind my back and plotting on not returning my money. Leslie is a wild card. She will party with her daughter, smoke weed and drink with her daughter, pick up ninjas with her daughter, etc. And I am not knocking her parenting, but she's raising her daughter all the wrong way. What would you do in this case? How would you handle the non-returned money, the fight, everything? My entire trip was ruined along with our friendship. $1,500 is owed to me. I honestly was not thinking about her not paying me back because we always looked out for one another. The other homegirl, Molly, was has all her money had all her money ready for me at the time of booking. Leslie was the only one that didn't, and I knew she would pay me back. Like I said, we looked out for each other, but this time she didn't. Please give me your advice. So I- Let me just break it down to you because I first have to take a sip. So Shanice is 35 years old and her friend Leslie is 40 years old. Their other mutual friend is 30 years old, which is named Marley. Now here's the thing. Marley was Shanice's, was, excuse me, Marley was Leslie's friend way, way, way longer than she has been Shanice's friend. So actually Marley and Leslie have been friends first. I guess Leslie introduced Marley to Shanice, you know, whatever it is. So they became a threesome, not a threesome like that, but like a friendship, a threesome. So they got this girl's trip coming up. They were taking a cruise for seven days. That sounds really nice. Okay. And Marley had all her money. Shanice was doing the booking. Leslie, who's been Shanice's friend for 10 years, didn't have her funds ready. Said she would pay her back either before the trip or the day of the trip. Either way, Leslie was going to give Shanice back the $1,500 that was owed to her. So no money was received. They on the trip, they go to the first spot that they go to where they dock the ship. They spending it up. They all spending money. Okay, every last one of them was spending money. However, Leslie was spending money, like she said, like I guess it was basically going out of style. And she's still trying to figure out, well, then... You spend the money, but you didn't get my $1,500 back. And then later on that day, Leslie bet Marley, the 30-year-old friend, the mutual friend, I'll give you $300, right? Was it $300? I'll give you $300 if you twerk on the table. And she accepted the bet, and there you have it. First of all, y'all all sharing one big room. That's cool. I'm not really sure if that's what you do on a girl's trip. I've never been on one, okay? However, my opinion... I I get that y'all have been friends for 10 plus years and I get that y'all look out for each other, but I'm sorry if you don't have money to pay for a trip, but you want to pay me later, bitch, that means you don't need to go on no trip. That's just my opinion and my opinion only. I mean, that's how I feel. If you don't have money to go on a trip in hand, then that means you don't need to go on a trip. I'm not going to go on a trip with somebody if I don't have the money right then and there and tell them, well, look, I can pay you back either this day or the day we go on a trip. Nah, because it's not that important for me. If I don't have the money to go somewhere, I'm not going to go, okay? If I just have enough and I have money to pay my bills, I'm still not going to go because that money is for the bills. That's me. I'm a very paranoid person when it comes to money. I like to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. As far as loaning money out to people, that's not something that I really like to do too much. Um, My thing is, you know, I've done that already. I've loaned my eldest son money and he's never paid it back. So I've learned my lesson. I don't really like to burn bridges or ruin friendships over finances. You know what I'm saying? Like your finance is your finance. My finance is my finance. What I got going on is my business. And what you got going on is your business. No, no cap, no, no disrespect. But I just feel like sometimes we have to learn how to say no to people. And it doesn't really matter how long you've been friends with them or related to them or knowing them or work with them. I just feel like sometimes we need to learn how to say no. And my thing is this. It's hard for me to say no to somebody. And I think it's a lot, it has a lot to do with the fact that I don't like being told no. So if I don't like you telling me no, I don't really want to tell somebody else no. I just feel like no. I hate the word no. And so that's probably why I don't ask people to help me with things. It don't matter what it is. You could be, I could be like, can you help me get this tire off? Or can you help me get this groceries out the car? I'll do things on my own before I ask people only because I don't like the word no. And once you tell me no, I kind of feel embarrassed. You know what I mean? So I really try to avoid interacting with people to where I need certain kind of help. But like she said, they've been friends for 10 plus years and they've been helping each other out. And I think that's also a a positive because when you do have a friend and y'all can actually help one another out and repay one another, then that's a good reflection on you as a person. 
But here we are. We're going on a cruise for seven days. We're going on a girl trip. You know, y'all see I got my little fake it to your make it ring on, right? Um, but here we are. We're going on a girl's trip. It's for seven days. It's three of us. Like I said, that's really cool. I've never been on a cruise. I've never been on a girl's trip, neither. Um, and Leslie is betting Marley to dance on tables and accept $300, but she ain't, um, she ain't paid Shawnee's back. But that's, that's one negative. But now y'all in the room together. They in the room. They all in their room together. They side eyeing Shanice. They giving her dirty looks. She asking them what's up. Why y'all looking at me? But talking amongst yourselves. Then they call her all type of names. They call her. I know they call her Debbie Downer. And they call her a loser. First of all, how you a fucking loser if you the one who paid for fucking Leslie's trip? Because in reality, you paid for that trip. That bitch ain't give you no money back, but you the loser. Girl, listen, I would have let that bitch know right there. I know neither one of y'all bitches is talking about somebody being a loser. Because for one bitch, you ain't even got the money to pay back for this trip, okay? Let alone you call somebody a loser. And Marley, who the fuck are you? You just stand on the table and twerk. The grown-ass woman was twerking on the table. So who's really the loser? Y'all two bitches is the losers. Better yet, why don't y'all just jump aboard or jump overboard, okay? Just just go overboard with that bullshit. So they start arguing. Staff came, knocked on the door, removed Shanice from the room, put her somewhere else. Then the next day, they start to squabbling and fighting, physically fighting on a cruise ship. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all something. First of all, I have seen on YouTube and TikTok, I think it was TikTok, it might not even been YouTube, how people be on these cruise ships and, and I've seen them physically fighting. Now, for one, let me tell y'all something. I can't swim, but I'm pretty sure if I could, I still wouldn't want to be on nobody's cruise ship in the middle of, of all that body of water, physically fighting with no fucking body, okay? That's one thing that I'm not about to do. You need to learn how to conduct yourselves like grown-ups. If people are physically fighting on a cruise ship, then the next place that y'all dock at, they all need to get the fuck off the ship. That is endangering other people's lives, including their own. Could you imagine you physically fighting with somebody on a cruise ship or you see somebody physically fighting on a cruise ship and they asses fall overboard or get thrown overboard? Anything is possible to happen. Like, there's certain places where you really don't want to type, type, have any type of drama or altercation or physical fight. Like, the cruise ship, for one, a motherfucking airplane okay a bus i i would think like if we're gonna physically all fight i'm gonna need to be on a bus at least i know we can pull over a whole lot easier and there's land for these motherfuckers to get out my passengers to get out my fighters to get out I, i'm gonna feel a lot safer versus being on a cruise ship or being on an airplane but this is the sad part about it i know she black because when you on gmail google and people's pictures be attached to the email that was her picture and also not that not only that but she also sent me a picture of them at the dock all three of them leaving like a little selfie but it was stated in the email not to show you guys and like i just said to you guys it's sad that we can be so hurtful to our own people and i did say not as a color but as a human being because we are all here on this earth we are all our own people but then it gets really pathetic and sad when it's our own own people, like the same ethnic background. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, when somebody give you something or loan you something, it's not that they gave it to you so you could keep it, but it's for you to pay back. And then when you got your other friend in on, oh, we, I ain't giving her no money back. This seemed like it was already planned because Marley is the one who said, well, tell her like you told me, you're not giving her no money back. So is that really your friend? Was she really your friend? Sometimes you have these friends and you really feel like they're your friends, so you think they are. But at the end of the day, they're only there for one particular reason. And I told y'all this before, like two or three weeks ago, regarding one of my friends. And I tell you, I had to kind of like leave her alone because she kept calling me light-skinned freckle face, introducing me to people as light-skinned freckle face. That ain't my motherfucking name. My name is Night Light Skin Freckle Face. My name ain't Light Skin. My name ain't Freckle Face. My name is April. You introduced me as such. And being that we are women of the same age, though I'm a couple years older than you, I would think that you had it together and more mature as to know better than to introduce me as such. Um, I did this slide a couple of times, like I said, because I thought, you know, she was being playful. Really didn't think too much of it until I started realizing you getting mad that you didn't get invited somewhere with me and my best friend, who's also light-skinned with freckles, you introducing me still like that, I started taking it as an insult or jab or way of bullying. So I did have to say something. And when I let when I let it be known what I was saying was what I was saying, I did also follow up with, if you don't like what I got to say, then I we can see each other face-to-face. -face. We still friends, but we're not cool like that no more. I really wasn't feeling the name call. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I thought it was being playful. However... Now you got these two females who already been chit-chatting about Shanice, about not paying back 
any type of finances for a trip. Bitch, you didn't have the money to go on that trip. No way. And now for you to come at somebody like that, how you gonna get mad? How do both these bitches gonna get mad about money that's owed? How you gonna borrow $1,500 and get mad and have an attitude talking about, bitch, you not getting it back from me. You can get it back from me in blood or take me to court. Girl, don't tell me I can get it back from you in blood, okay? Don't, girl, don't tell me that. Mm -mm. Don't tell me that's one of your requests. That's one of my options, okay? Don't tell me that because I just might get it back from you that way and you not gonna like it. And going to court, girl, I might have to go upside your head because we going to court. Like she said, clock her. Either way, $1,500 is a lot and it is not a lot, depending on what your finances are already. But it's so sad and pathetic now. Also, remember, they were on board. They were on the ship cruise on board fighting, physically fighting, and she got jumped by these two females. Then two weeks after the trip, you see them, she sees them somewhere else and they fight. And again, Shanice and her husband, two kids were out shopping in the mall parking lot. Who walks through the mall parking lot is Leslie, Leslie's 20 year old daughter and Marley. Leslie's 20 year old daughter gets in Shanice's face and starts running her mouth. Now, let me tell you something. You of age, sweetheart. When you're 20 years old, you of age. And what I would have did is I would have clocked that bitch upside her head for jumping up in my face. And I dare y'all bitches to try to jump me right now because I might got my husband. So you got these two females that have already disrespected you on the ship. And now you got them plus one disrespecting you in the parking lot. And you trying to figure out how to get your money back. First of all, sweetheart, here's what I would suggest. You can take her to small claims court if you want to. And hopefully they will side with you. But loaning someone that much money, you always need to get it written down and written down and notarized. OK, that's my thing. I would loan someone that money, amount of money. I'm getting it written in paper with your effing signature that you're going to give me my goddamn money back. Because if you don't, bitch, I'm taking you to court and I'm going to get my money back one way or the other. That was my mistake when I did loan my son so much money. I should have did that, but you know, that's my family. So you just automatically assume that they're going to give you your money back. But you know something? That's a well lesson learned because now I won't loan him a motherfucking thing. Nope, not happening. Not happening. As much as I love my kids, he is one that I will not loan a nothing to. And that's straight facts. You know what I'm saying? It could be like $5, that's it. But I'm not about to loan you a light, night, a nice hefty lump sum of money. Never again. But when you do things like that for people, you really do need to get it in writing that they're going to return your money and how much you've loaned them. That's the smart way to do it. Because hearsay, she say, and verbally is not enough. There are people out here in this world who want to take, take, take. That's all they do is take, take, take. And they don't care who they take it from. They don't care how much they take it from. They don't care how you feel about not getting your money back. And they damn sure don't care about how your finances look once they've taken it. People are wicked out here. And I hate to say that about people, but you never really know who your true friends are. And it's sad to say that, but it is the truth. You could have been friends with somebody for ample amount of years. That person ain't the same one from the day you met them. People change over time. It don't matter if that's your best friend since you was two years old. And now you're 20, 30, 40, 50. People change over time. People's finances change over time. People in general change over time. You need to take all that into consideration. Like, okay, that's my best friend. We've been friends for this long. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm gonna need this in writing of when you gonna pay me my money back. No disrespect for you, to you. That's how I would say no disrespect to you, but we gonna need this to have this in writing that you gonna pay me my money back within a certain amount of time. And that's just what it is. And if that person cannot go along and agree to give you your money back and put it in writing, then you don't need to loan them shit. You know what I'm saying? If a person can't agree with you on getting something in writing and when they're going to pay it back to you or that they're going to pay it back to you, then you don't need to loan them no money because that right there is a red flag. Now, you also got these two women jumping you on a cruise ship, which sucks, you know, and then you got them fighting you in the parking lot. OK, now I don't know how many of them fought her in the parking lot because she didn't say it's so sad. It's, it's just really pathetic because I have seen so many different stories about friends, black women going on uh, girls trips together and getting into all type of fights, jumping each other. And this all boils down to somebody being jealous of another, somebody hating, you know, what I'm saying what somebody got, what somebody don't have. And it's sad. It's just sad and pathetic. Like as a grown woman. As a black woman, we already have it tough out here. But as a grown black woman, for you to want to be slick and sneaky to someone who's been there for you for a certain amount of time, that's some real grimy shit. Like, I don't I don't get with that. And that's when you, it comes, you start thinking, like, do I really need friends? Do I really need to have this amount of friends? You're going to have to take her to court to get your money back. You're going to have to explain to the judge all the things that went down. 
during this escalation. I definitely would take her to court. $1,500 is a lot of money. Some people may feel like it's not, but to me, it's a lot of money. Some women, you know what? Some women just seem like they do too much. The twerking on the table. How old are you? You're 30 years old. Why is it that every, not every woman, but why do women feel like twerking out in public is so fascinating? Like, it's your your ass. I don't want to see your ass shake it. I'm not hating. It's really best in your best interest to take the young lady to court. Um, I'm not sure if you have any type of witnesses that or any type of video from the altercation within the parking lot or on the ship. I feel like if you do, I would think that those things are very important to bring along with you and to show the judge at hand who's going to be in charge of this case. But $1,500 is not a lot and it's not a little bit. Like if somebody took $1,500 from me, I'm going to be real pissed off. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be really pissed off. Okay. Overly mad. But like I said, you can't trust everybody. And when you're loaning out certain amounts of money to people, you really need to get it in writing. As far as y'all friendship, y'all friendship is over, girl. These are the type of women, which is just sad. Like I said, I've seen so many things on YouTube, in the news, so many different stories of our own Black women. When they get to girls' trips, they're going out, there's always like some type of competition. And it's not always like the older generation, like myself, but it just seems like it's like these younger generations. You know, there have been women that have been unalived due to girls' trips and hanging out. And I just feel like, come on, man, we need to do better. We need to do better as a people. We need to do just do better as human beings in general. There's too much wicked things going on in this world for people that we think that's our own friends to come at us. Like, it's bad enough we have to block ourselves off from a lot of the wicked that's going on in this world. You know what I'm saying? We have to protect ourselves from all the wickedness that's going on. And then when you have friends that you feel like that are really close-knit with you, and you feel like you have to block them off as well. That just feels like, you know what? Do I really need to trust anybody? Do I really need to be friends with anybody? Is this person really my friend? It sucks when you have to think like that. It's very disheartening to feel like everybody's against you and everybody is willing to sacrifice you to get what they want out of you. Like, that's the part where it really bothers me. You know, life is short. We're supposed to love one another and enjoy life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I used to be, I used to be really, really a quick rocket to go off, Okay. And I still can be that type of person, but I try to see the good in people and I try to give a lot of people grace. And sometimes you can't give people grace, which is unfortunate, but I try to give people the same respect that I would want back in return. And I try to treat people the same way that I would want another person to treat me. You know what I'm saying? That's why when people ask me for certain shit, I'm gonna have to get that in writing. And when you asking me for a certain amount of money, bitch, I'm not loaning you all that. I'm not loaning you because I have my limits too. And at the end of the day, I have my own family to care for and my own self to care for. So with that being said, even if I did get it in writing from you, who's to say you're gonna give it back? If I still have to go to court with you, some people, they will get it in writing and you still got to take them to court. And when you got to do all that, it's like, you know what? I got it in writing from you and I still got to take you to court because of this. Like, girl, no holds bars, but I'm about to go clock you upside your goddamn head for this. Like... People, we need to do better. Like, we all here on this earth for one reason and one reason only. Look out for ourselves. Look out for each and every person. They just be too much bickering and hating and being jealous from people. And I just don't understand why. Just why. Here you are. You're going on a trip with two other females who you think are really your friends. When, lo and behold, they sitting behind your back. They already scheming and scamming. How about we not giving this bitch back $1,500? We not giving her the money back. Like, Marley paid for her portion but her friend leslie didn't so leslie was already scheming and scamming like i'm not giving this bitch her money back the reason why i say she was already scheming and scamming because she didn't tell marley that shit marley up there talking about well bitch you can tell tell her what you tell me tell her what you tell me you ain't giving her that money back how you sitting there telling the next bitch that you're not giving back somebody else's money with your broke ass borrowed or is she really broke she she might have money but just don't want to spend her money there are people like that who don't want to spend their own money they rather spend somebody else's money let me tell you but no bitch get over like that on me because I'm not about to loan nobody no $1,500. I don't give a fuck who you are. You're going to have to get that shit in writing. Now, if you my mama or my daughters, I'm, I'm going to loan it to you, but you're going to have to get that shit in writing because they don't play when it comes to money. I'm not about to play. I ain't getting no younger and ain't nobody rolling out no million dollar check to me. Ain't no money growing on the backyard of my trees. So yeah, I'm not playing about my money. I like all my bills to be paid on time. I don't like to sit around being broke. I don't like to sit around worried about no fucking money neither. Okay, so yeah, you ain't got to worry about no bitch trying to get $1,500 for me. Because I'm not giving it up just that easy. I'm not giving it up. And like I said, if you can't pay for a trip, that means your ass don't need to go on a trip, okay? This is what I be talking about, people. They always be trying to live beyond their means, always be trying to keep up 
with the Joneses, always be trying to do extra when they ain't got it. Bitch, if you ain't got the money, you ain't got the motherfucking money. If you ain't got the money to go on no goddamn trip, then you ain't got no money, then you don't need to be going on no trip. If you gotta borrow money to go on a trip, that means you don't need no vacation. That means you need to work a little bit harder so you can get your finances up, so you get that bread up. Straight facts. Like, seriously, if you ain't got the money to go on a vacation with you and your friends, that means you need to work harder to get that money up, not borrow from nobody. That's just senseless. That's immature. That's irresponsible. That's childish. That's not grown up. That's very ungrown. If you ain't got the money to go on the trip, that means you don't need to go on the trip. Another trip will come up and hopefully your ass will have the funds to furnish that trip. And if not, then guess what, bitch? You're going to have to sit that one out too. There's no way I would have loaned her money to go on a trip if she didn't have the money. And you're not going to pay me back the day of the trip. You're going to pay me back never because I'm not loaning you the money to go on the trip if you ain't got it at time of booking. Not happening. So yes, Shanice, you're going to have to get that money back through court or she said you can get it back through blood. Now here's the thing about the blood thing. In my older, younger days, I would have I been like, yeah, bitch, get the money back in blood. Just like she said, get the money back in blood. What's up? I'm getting that money back in blood like you, like you suggested. That was my option. So I'm going to take that. However, being that I'm older, more wiser, a little bit more mature, I would say getting the money back in blood might cost you money because getting the money back in blood seems like something violent, which means it could account on, it could, you know, you might, there might be an arrest there and you might be the one in handcuffs if she said get it back in blood. Okay. So that means you out $1,500 plus whatever else that you had to bail yourself out, out, out with because you got that back in blood. And so I don't really suggest getting it back in blood because you're going to be out $1,500 and you're going to be out whatever the bail money costs for your ass to get out of the jail if the cops are called and you get caught. So don't take her fucking option A about getting it back in blood. That was just her running her fucking mouth. Get it back from her in court. Make a spectacle of her. Let her know you stand on business. And business does not always have to mean fighting, being physical with one another. I'm standing on business. Because as a grown woman, we must do grown woman things. We can't be out here in the streets fighting like that. Like, come on, y'all. Let's just be for real. At the age of 40 and 30 and 35, come on now. Who has time to be standing out there, like, really physically fighting at that age? Like, you would think that this is something like teenagers do, okay? Maybe even early in your early 20s, this might be something you do. But to be fighting somebody on a cruise ship, how the fuck do you fight somebody on a cruise ship that paid your way to get on this cruise ship that you owe money? How are you going to get mad at someone that you, you owe money to? How are you going to get mad that you owe that person money? The only person that should be getting mad, you should be getting mad with is yourself. You should be kicking yourself in the ass for borrowing the money and not paying it back. Be very careful who you think your friends are, how you met them, where you met them. But it just sucks that she was out $1,500 plus whatever she spent on that flight home. And for another woman to put another woman down or want to fight her over her finances, it's just so, it's just so silly. And it's just, it's just so pathetic. Take that girl to court, Shanice. Know who your real friends are. Stop giving up all your funds to people because you feel like they're your friends and they can pay you back. And if that's what you want to do, that's on you. But just make sure that you get at least it written down in paper. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go giving your money away willy nilly. And like, it, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you do it the right way. Could you imagine if somebody was ready to fight you over your money that they owe you? Girl, that's when you really got to knock their fucking head off. Like on some real shit, if you was to try to fight me, get mad with me over money that you owe me, oh, I'm really going in on you. Because you ain't got no business getting mad with me and you ain't got no business trying to fight me over some money that you owe me. Oh, yes, I'm going in. I'm going all no holds barred to this. Bitch, I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to drag you. I'm going to drag you every time I see you in person. And I just said that we got to act mature. But $1,500 is $1,500. You're not about to stall on me. You're not about to stall on me uh -uh, over money that you owe me. Oh, no, because if you try to stall on me over money you owe me, girl, that's when you got to go all out. I'm just saying that's what you got to do. You got to do. Gotta, gotta do. Okay. So on that note, I love you all. Stay Diva and Divalicious. Get Shanice your opinion below. Let me know if you've ever had an encounterment like this with somebody, your friends, your family, whatever. Loaned you money, didn't want to give it back. Or you loaned them money rather and you didn't, they didn't want to give it back or you didn't want to give it back. Like, I really don't want to hear about it. If you didn't want to get money back that you got loaned, because then I'm going to go on for you in the comments. But if you had a situation like this, let us know in the comments. Girl, I will see y'all all in the comments. Stay Diva and Divalicious. I love y'all. And be safe out there. And I'll see y'all in the next one.